Amen. Today I want to speak about the anointing and the difference between the anointing and the and the gift of God. Amen. The Bible says the gift of God is without repentance. Sometimes we mistake the gift to be in the anointing. No. Sometimes the gift is you know comes with arrogance you know it, it makes us to be boastful because it's a gift even when we baslead you can still display the gift some some young folks in the ministry when they go out to pray for the sick and the sick is healed they say oh god has called me into the ministry because of the miracle they did that god did through them what they don't understand is the gift Speaking in tongues is the gift, you know, but when you back it, all these things up, when you back them up with the anointing, it becomes more effective. Amen. So I want us to take note of that. And I'm going to give two instances in the Old Testament. The, 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 let's say the Israelites, the ark of God was the anointing, the glory of God, you know, the presence of God. Whenever they go for battle with the anoint, with the ark, they always come up come out victorious but what Eli did not know in his time as a high priest the high priest then was more like a president you know so what he didn't know that the ark had left he didn't know that the ark had left sorry that the glory had left the ark sorry he didn't know so they went to battle they were invaded the Philistines and uh, they got defeated the two sons Hophni and Phinehas were killed but Dao didn't bother him, and he asked, what about the ark? He said the ark of God was captured. The Bible says he fell and broke his neck and died. Because he knew for the ark to be captured means they we are having empty boss. The glory had left a long time ago. Sometimes we don't know in our churches the glory had left. We are just displaying the gifts. Just as in the time of Eli, you know, uh, it took a Samuel. To restore the glory of God. We need a Samuel in this generation that can speak the undiluted word of God, word of truth, speaking it to power. Because so many things are happening in the Christendom that makes one to cry. I was listening to a certain pastor, American pastor, that said he went to heaven and he saw Jesus weeping. Jesus was on the throne weeping or something like that. Then he asked Jesus to come and Jesus came and leaned on him weeping and he was coming Jesus down and people were like wow so excited really are you serious well what he did was a forgivable sin he lied against Jesus not the Holy Spirit the Bible says in Matthew chapter 12 verse 31 to 32 every sin is forgivable sin against Christ is forgivable but when you sin against the Holy Spirit it's on it's, you, you, you are not forgiven it's a Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, lying against the Holy Spirit is, 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 is terrible. So whatever you commit here on earth is forgivable, but do not lie against the Holy Spirit. You know, there was a pastor during the COVID era from Nigeria. Let me mention his name so I don't tag every Nigerian pastor as corporate. You know, his name is Dr. Chris Okafo. He goes by Dr. Okafo. So he rented... A woman in his church nobody knew the woman was rented until she was busted so the woman had a medical condition a withered hand and these are all internet uh, online preachers you know that can give you prophecies and you if you're watching you'll be thinking wow 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 you know but most of these things are arranged they pay for it they pay people to go get information it, most of these churches are more like a secret court you know uh, uh, don't believe what you see on TV. Don't believe them because they are trying to market their gifts. They, and like I said, anointing is the glory of God that comes with humility, gentility, and you, you are a servant leader. You, you don't preach about yourself, you preach about Christ. And I will show you in the scripture. So this man was praying for that woman and the hand was stretching, all arranged. Is a medical condition. The hand could stretch. I mean, that hand is boneless. I don't know, you know, but it stretched. But what got me pissed off is that not that the man prayed or paid for the woman to demonstrate that, to go viral, but the man said, 
that God told him that it was the mother-in-law that bewitched her and she had accident and had that uh, medical condition. They were all fallacies, lies from pit of hell. But this man lied against the Holy Spirit. He lied against the revelation of God. And he has not forget, repented. And still people go to the church every morning, every Sunday, every go to crusades to do what? The glory has left. Glory has left. I'm not trying to judge him, but I'm judging him with the word of God. The glory has left. So let's be very sensitive. The Bible says, examine all spirit. Okay? You have to be very sensitive when people demonstrate the gift to steal from you, to exploit from you, to deceive the elect. You have to be very careful. Now, in Acts of Apostles, in chapter 10, Acts 10, um, the Bible told us about Peter. You know, uh, he's a man we all know very anointed. For, his name is Simon. First name is Simon. Last name is Peter. And he was in Joppa at that point, staying in a house of a man called Simon as well. So Peter was hungry and he went upstairs to pray and he told them to prepare food. In the process of preparing food, he fell asleep. He went into a, a trance, the Bible says, and God brought food from heaven. But Peter saw the food that God brought was unclean, reptiles, all wild animals. And God said, Peter, excuse me, rise up, kill and eat. Peter was like, no, this is unclean. God asked him, why are you calling what I have cleansed unclean? Now, for you to understand how a man that is anointed reacts, Peter did not question. Peter woke up and was trying to get the interpretation of that revelation. Then a certain man, um, a centurion called Ken, uh, Cornelius um, from the Italian regiment, you know, the Bible uh, referred him as a just man. He was so good, generous to the poor, helping those in, in need, those oppressed with one situation or the other. He was so kind. But God told this man to send for Peter. But if you weren't non-Jews, Gentiles, we are more like unclean people. So Peter, when he woke up and was thinking, men from Cornelius came. Peter was like, oh, wow. Is that the message God was trying to convert to me? Because Cornelius had sent those men to bring Peter. And Peter was like, oh, wow. Is that the message? Don't call anyone he has cleansed unclean. This message is trying to tell us, when you are anointed, you don't call anybody, uh, you, you are not homophobic because you don't serve homophobic God. You don't call lesbians, gays, transgenders, you don't call them, you don't segregate, call them an outcast. No, show them love. Your God is the righteous judge. So Peter was trying to do that and God said, don't do that. Now, what did Peter do? When you read verse 38, there's something he said, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Peter said, when he got to Cornelius in his house, he was preaching to their household. Peter was not talking about himself. He was preaching as a servant. He says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. So you can see the anointing is to do good. makes you to do good. You don't suppress people. Rather, you deliver those oppressed by the devil. You don't use the anointing to, 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 to suppress people, to tell people, oh, this person is a witch, this person is that, this person is evil. No, you preach peace. And because when you're telling this person is a witch, you're putting fear in the other person and you're glorifying the devil. So the anointing, when you're anointed, you don't curse people. Your mouth speaks good. Your mouth is for good. You heal the sick. You deliver those that are oppressed by the devil. So I want to implore your honor with utmost humility. Go after the anointing. Do not accumulate the gifts without backing it up with the anointing. Because the anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing means you have a purpose. You carry something in you. Purpose of God in your life. But the gift could be your own personal purpose, personal ambition. Let us realize that we are servant leaders.
God bless you. Amen.